Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dream Boat. The experts at Two Rivers Boatworks explore their creative side, taking on a custom retrofit of a brand new polling skiff. The exciting thing about this skiff is it's not just my vision, it's everybody at um, Two Rivers Boatworks' vision. To kick off the project, Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks builds a one-off dash panel to bring this TRB custom skiff over the top. Today, Rocky Point Boatworks, Dave and the, and the camera crew and Mark tackle a challenging installation on the skimmer skiff. FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Captain Ed Zayak aboard his completely rebuilt 22-foot Kenner. Now, when Ed describes the way the boat turned out as nice, he's being modest. Ed did a fantastic job restoring this boat. And the team at Wildfire Marine tears into resurrecting and transforming a classic 25-foot Bertram. This 25 Bertram is a real cool boat to work on, and it makes a great outboard conversion. Real excited to get going. It's going to be a nice boat. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So today we're headed up to Sanford, Florida uh, to the Skimmer Skiff factory. We're going to pick up our second Skimmer Skiff. Um, we're going to head right back to the shop with it, get started doing some really cool things and turn it into the Two Rivers edition of the Skimmer Skiff. So over at Two Rivers Boatworks, we're super excited to get involved in our third season of Florida Sportsman's Project Dreamboat. As you guys saw last year, we ended the season with a little boat that I did myself, and that kind of lit the creative spark to doing a new line of boats. But what I discovered was there was a lot of interest in small boats. So we went about finding a small boat that was well built, had sort of a unique twist to it, and we came across Skimmer Skiff. And slowly but surely, we, we created a gem. We decided that, well, this is definitely a positive direction. We need to go in with the boat, with the way that we want to move our business forward. And that's kind of how TRB Editions was, were born. So TRB Editions are basically a custom side of Two Rivers Boatworks, where we're gonna take brand new boats and customize them our special way. Right, they cost a bit more money, but you're getting a ton of luxury features in these little boats. Nate is off to Sanford to go and pick up one of these boats. I can't wait for him to get back here so we can see the boat in the flesh and get all the creative juices and energy flowing to design and build a perfect boat for a customer. I'm just gonna take a quick look at the boat, see how it looks before we hook it up and take it home. Not really much to worry about. One of the reasons that we decided to go with the Skimmer Skiff is the quality of work that they have. As we're walking around the boat, we're just checking to make sure there's no scratches on it. Uh, make sure that there's no air voids or anything um, in the fiberglass. Want to make sure that, you know, the build is what we ordered, the colors are right. You know, just the general inspection of the boat, make sure that uh, everything's nice. When we get back to the shop, we can get going on it. All right, everything looks great. Let's get this thing hooked back up to the truck and take it back to the shop so we can start tricking it out. Now that we've got our hands on the second skimmer skiff, we're really excited to get working on it. It gives us a chance at the shop to kind of break up our normal day-to-day -day routine. It gives us a chance to use our creative sides a little bit. Dale spent a lot of time uh, designing these boats and really put a lot of thought into how he wants it to look. Uh, so now it's our turn to bring the Dale's vision to life and uh, put all the custom touches on these boats. Once the boat arrived, I, I was really excited because it's going to be a boat that's going to represent Two Rivers Boatworks 
and the new branch of our business, TRB Editions, very, very well. When we return, Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks gets technical, fabbing a trick dash and more for the TRB Skimmer Skiff. This segment brought to you by Pacer Group, marine grade electrical wire, components, and systems. For more than 30 years, Pacer Group has been the most trusted provider of wire, cable, and electrical products to the top marine manufacturers. All of our wire and cable is made in the USA to ensure it's the best in the industry. Pacer Group provides the highest quality electrical products to be found at one place. You can order with us at pacergroup.net. Shop online and ship or pick up your web order within an hour at our Hollywood, Florida location. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Rocky Point Boatworks brings a custom dash dream at TRB to life. All right, everybody, welcome back to another great season of Project Dreamboat. I'm Dave, owner of Rocky Point Boatworks. We're kicking off the season with a uh, skimmer skiff for Two Rivers Boatworks and uh, doing a pretty tricked out custom dash panel for them in our electronic side box. I'm ready to roll. I'm going to use the notes from last build up here. And uh, we're going to start knocking these babies out. Make sure we got no scratches. Because there's nothing like doing something and then not seeing where the scratch might have been. You peel it off and you're like, oh, especially on a job like this. Quick finger check, we're good. OK, so now we got our piece roughed out. Once we find our center line, we're going to go ahead and try to make our exact cutout for our sim rad. Now, you could use the, the template they provide you with the sim rad, but however, we're back mounting this, so we kind of going to throw those to the side and do our own measurements. This thing's going to stick out you like a sore thumb, so it has to be perfect, because these guys demand high quality. All right, so we got our rough layout. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the laser and let the laser do all the hard work. All right, so we've had the laser for over a year now and we've learned quite a lot on it. Well, I should say I've learned quite a lot on it. It's like having another employee here. It doesn't complain, it just works. Now, it took me 43 years to learn to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> so the laser finished up its job. We took the material out and we put it to the Simrad to check our fit now. It looked pretty damn good, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so now we're going to try to find the center line on this console before we pop any holes in it. Keep in mind, when you're putting holes in your boat, make sure you're putting them in the correct location and where you really want them, because unlike here, if I make a mistake in the acrylic, I can make another piece. You make a hole in your boat, well, then you're calling a guy like me to come out and fix it. Obviously, you can see it's not sitting flush, so we got to continue to cut. That's why I only cut a little bit. I'm trying not to take out too much material, so we'll do a couple cuts here and there. If it takes me a little longer, so be it. So we just try to leave as much there as possible. The only thing I can say is when you're drilling in any type of fiberglass, um, sharp bits, new blades, um, take your time. Just because you're putting something in and you go, oh, I'm not going to see it. Somebody's going to remove it at some point in time and see that hole. Me, I like to put when things are pulled out, at the least they go, man, that guy took his time. So once all the little holes and everything are all done and we have the panel on there, we're gonna go ahead and do fine tune our edges. Because like I said earlier, nothing's ever square or straight. So this is where we're gonna come in and we'll take a little off here, a little there, and um, a lot of different angles we gotta account for and uh, get this thing ready so we can get the windshield on. So we're cutting some quarter inch acrylic. Uh, it's gonna form the, um, the bottom frame of the windshield that the main dash meets up to. So it gives me something where I could bend to and it gives me a way to attach the windshield without you seeing any mounting hardware. All right, so we use the laser to make the base of our windshield, which is actually gonna be our uh, form for the windshield. And as you see me do before making windshields, we used the hot rod and um, we heated up our material, went ahead and bent it to our piece that we made in the laser, clamped it, let that thing sit and cool so it keeps its form. After that's all done, then we're gonna go ahead and um, trim up what we need to trim, apply some glue, and uh, get that thing ready to mount on the boat. I used to do cakes for Publix for a couple years. I'm the lead designer. All right, so now we got the windshield mounted and all secured, through bolted. 
we went ahead and had to shim up the Simrad just a little bit so when the acrylic goes down, it gives it that nice flush look. And we also apply a little sealant behind it as well. Nothing, not a 5200, nothing like that. A little Sikaflex does the trick. Just helps with the mounting screws and that to help everything stay in place. All right, so I got all the caulking applied and we're ready to put the panel on. Set it in place, started doing my little pressing on it to get everything in there and realized I made a boo-boo. So in my haste and excitement of getting this job wrapped up, I neglected to pull the paper off. Good thing no one will see it though, because it just happened here with just me in the shop. You folks at home. Well, I'm very glad I caught that. So went ahead and removed it and uh, cleaned up a little bit, reapplied some uh, more adhesive and finally put it on. So caulking's in, wiping down everything. There's a few more things I need to do to this boat before they take delivery. Super excited seeing this project wrap up and I look forward to seeing what the guys at Two Rivers do. If it looks anything like the other boat they did, it's gonna look amazing. When we come back, George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Captain Ed Zayak aboard his completely rebuilt and customized 22-foot Kenner in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Taco Marine. Troll the edge. Safety is paramount when boating. That's why Taco developed the Grand Slam 800 VHF antenna mount. Easily raise and lower your boat's antenna by simply unlocking the crank handle from the base and turning. It's quick, easy, and best of all, safe. No more climbing on gunnels, seats, or tops just to adjust your antenna. Find out more about the Grand Slam 800 VHF antenna mount at tacomarine.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Today we're in Stewart, Florida to meet up with Captain Ed Zayak. Now Ed is a native of Stewart, Florida and a veteran fishing guide in the Treasure Coast. We're here today to have a look at Ed's beautifully restored Kenner Bay Boat. I'm Captain Ed Zaya. I've been guiding here in the Treasure Coast since about 98. And over those years, I've had several different boats and kind of eventually moved on to the promotional boat program. So when I had the chance to get into this Kenner, I jumped on it and I liked the boat. It was great and turn around and I've been guiding out of it now for maybe 11 years, so that went pretty quick. It got pretty beat over the 11 years and it was time to do something, so it was either buy a new boat or fix up the old boat. Well, if you've seen the show before, you know what Ed's next move was. He decided to restore the trusty old Kenner. This would prove to be a move that was not only gonna save Ed money, but it was gonna keep him on familiar ground and let him continue to fish off of a tried and true platform. I didn't think it was that bad until I really got down there close and started looking and it, had, it was pretty bad, it needed some love. Nothing really structural, a lot of fiberglass cracks and chips and uh, scrapes and scratches over the years. The old non-skid was actually wore out behind the console where I stood, where my feet were. Luckily I had a lot of help. A lot of friends came and volunteered some time. We had some sanding parties and uh, big thank you to all those guys that showed up because it was not fun. When I started tearing things apart you could tell that over the years all the beating up and down the river and it had really loosened everything up. I don't think there was one screw that was tight joining my cap to the hull. So once it was re-glued and screwed back together, the boat has a much more solid feel now. One cool feature I added was a little tackle storage center under my tower where I stand. And it's perfect, it's about waist high. You open it up, I built a little drawer that slid out and it's right below where I keep my rods, the rod holder, so I can drop down and rig, keep all my terminal tackle in there. Very convenient, very easy to keep everything organized. When I laid the boat out, it was just over years of guiding. I wanted it to be clean, simple, and efficient. 
A centerpiece of the Kenner and a part that I really appreciated was the tower riser setup that Ed added to the boat. This would allow him to have a lot of storage underneath and two, it was gonna give him a better vantage point for sight fishing. With our fishery changing, you know, being elevated, I'm gonna spend more time out on the beach running, looking for fish. It was just a natural progression to throw that tower in. Also, when I added the tower, I was able to slide the whole setup forward, which opened up the whole back end of the boat. Gave me a lot more fishable space. The repowering was a huge upgrade. I put the new 200 four-stroke, and what a fantastic motor. The fuel efficiency is incredible. Load it with gear, live wells, customers on board. We're making almost five miles to gallon, so I couldn't be happier with that. And I did a lot of other upgrades, new jack plate, uh, two new Minn Kota Raptors, new trolling motor, new Solex. I redid all the wiring, new fuses, um, new switch panel. Did everything myself so I know exactly where every wire is. Basically, it's like a brand new boat. One of the things I noticed right away when I finished the boat was it's so much easier to keep clean now. Before, it was so old, beat up, and dull that it sucked in every stain, every dark water stain, blood stain, you name it, sunscreen. And it is, it's almost a pleasure to keep it nice because it's so easy to clean. So if you see my boat now, you'll see me, I have a rag constantly, I'm wiping up, and um, it's nice. Having something nice makes you want to keep it nice. Now when Ed describes the way the boat turned out as nice, he's being modest. Ed did a fantastic job restoring this boat. And this old Kenner ended up looking like a brand new boat, and more importantly, a boat that he was familiar with, the one that was going to provide him with many more years of service. This boat's been good for a lot of years. You know, I've made a lot of money in that boat. It's got me through a lot of situations, very comfortable with it. So it feels good to kind of fix it up, give it a new life. We're gonna go a little bit longer and keep fishing. After an initial investment of $15,000 and spending $20,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Ed's dream boat comes to a total of $35,000. When we return, the team at Wildfire Marine begins the extensive overhaul of a classic 25-foot Bertram. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine the ultimate outboard motor. to suzukimarine.com to find a dealer near you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the team at Wildfire Marine tears in to restoring a classic 25-foot Bertram. Well, here at Wildfire, we're ready to do another season. Um, we've been real busy all winter. We did quite a few uh, repaints and a couple of re-rigs. And right now we're getting ready to start out on a, on a bigger project. We have a customer, long-term customer of ours. Uh, he's got a 25 Moppy, Bertram Moppy, that uh, was an IO conversion. He wants to be, basically build himself a Hinkley day boat. Well, I live in the upstate New York. Uh, it's a 10-mile boat ride to my house. I live on a remote island about 100 yards south of Canada. I'm looking for a day boat with protection. So this will have canvas on it. You can take your friends out. Garage. I'm looking for transportation where I have to haul my groceries and my supplies and uh, this will this really fits the bill. This is a bigger boat than most people have up there but you get to be older and you're looking for more comfort and th this boat will be this will be one of the better boats on the river. This is the 12th boat that I've done uh, for either Dave or his brother Don and the bulk of them have been Bertram's. Uh, he's really a Bertram uh, aficionado. He, he knows a lot about them. He's dealt with them. He's owned them for, uh, I think the first one he said we, he bought over 45 years ago. Uh, and he still has an, another 20-foot Bertram that we did for him several years back. Dick Bertram was at an America's Cup race in the late 50s, and he observed a 23-foot boat 
the race was called off. He, he observed a 23-foot boat out there. He couldn't believe its capability. So he sought out the captain and found that that boat had been designed by, uh, by Ray Hunt. And what was different about it was the 24 to 27 foot dead rise and also the lifting strakes that were on the boat. And the deep V was a concept that, that Hunt saw. And so the next step was Bertram then commissioned Hunt uh, to build the Moppy. And the Moppy was a 31 foot plywood boat. Bertram went out there. He, they laughed at him when he showed up with the Moppy down in Lauderdale and he blew away the competition on the Miami to Nassau race in nasty seas and won by four hours next boat. Uh, they took the 31 and they retired it and they turned it over and they used that as the mold for making the 31s. But in the meanwhile, he needed to capitalize the company and you know, the 31s were a lot of money in those days, so they started out with the 25. Basic, same design and tremendous seaworthy capability. So that's kind of my attraction to them. I owned a project down in Fort Lauderdale called uh, 17th Street Quay. And I was trying to get Bertram as a tenant, and I ran into a guy by the name of Meredith Drummond, uh, who had been with Bertram from the inception of the com company. And he just called me up one day and said, David, I got a perfect boat for you. It's a 25, it's been repowered. It had in it what I guess was called a 488. I, I just bought the boat as a lark because it was good value. Used it a few times. Somebody stole the outdrives on it and I parked it. And I parked it for 20 years. <laughs> and I finally got to the point where I said, at my age, I'm either gonna do something with it or not. And I'd say the thing that really made the deal for me was the advent of these brackets. The Armstrong brackets have given new power options to this boat. Whereas the way the stringers were set up for the inboard outboards, they were too close. You're going to have to redo the transom anyhow. The, uh, the V drives is a crappy option. And, and all of that ate up cockpit space in this boat. And you know, these, these boats now are a quarter million bucks. They're up. And I can be into this boat for 20 cents on the dollar and have just as good of a boat. So that's my attraction. Um, we're real excited to get to work on this boat for David. This 25 Bertram is a real cool boat to work on and it makes a great outboard conversion and he's got some really good ideas uh, that we're going to go into you know, further along the line but uh, real excited to get going. It's going to be a nice boat. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. We join the fiberglass gurus at Wildfire Marine as they prepare the Bertram for new flotation bracket and outboard power. George Labonte joins Jonathan Bilby aboard his fully restored 1978 Boston Whaler Outrage. The experts at TRB dive into the Skimmer Skiff project, starting with bilge basics. And the Rocky Point Boatworks team provides valuable insight while performing routine service work on a new Suzuki outboard.